It's now Rupio Mazena back with us. And ESCOM is saying that the new emission rules will kill the economy. And, and naturally, make, they make want more money more. from us. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And it's unsurprising because that's kind of ESCOM's MO. But this decision has made ESCOM very worried about how it will keep the lights on after it's been refused permission to pollute far above legal limits. The power supplier had applied for exemptions from minimum air quality standards for its Matimba and Medupi power stations in Limpopo. The National Air Quality Officer says ESCOM has made minimal effort to comply with the standards since 2010. Now, some compliance postponements were granted, but others were not, and authorities are concerned about ESCOM's sulfur dioxide output. And let's talk more about the implications of this with the independent energy thought leader, Mike Rousseau. No doubt a big blow, as we've discussed throughout the day, Mike, to ESCOM, uh, the rejection that's come through from the regulator there. Uh, just give us a broad sense, a broad understanding of what exactly the kind of trouble this has put ESCOM into. Without a doubt, it has put ESCOM uh, uh, in a serious position at the worst possible time. I've personally been involved with this issue, both from government, from an ESCOM perspective and an industry perspective. And um, this is not the right time to impose such dramatic measures on ESCOM. Uh, they just can't, they can't do it. It's not possible. So uh, it makes no sense. Nonetheless, there is an easier way to address this problem. The first thing, um, as I've mentioned on so many of these programs before, uh, ESKIM can um, shut down the less effective and, and the smaller power plants, the older ones, uh, which would make a significant difference to the emissions. Those plants are notoriously inefficient and, and probably the worst polluters of all of them. Um, they have installed uh, sulfur desulfur, uh, sulfur um, emission reduction measures uh, at Kusile, uh, and Madupi itself has some some special uh, provisions which are better than the the other plants, the so-called second generation and first generation plants. So uh, at this point in time, uh, what we require is an immediate and serious intervention from the highest political level. Because I understand the Department of Environmental Affairs frustration. Uh, I mean, this is an important issue, but this is not the way to go about it by just you know, unilaterally imposing these restrictions on ESKIM, which will not only impact ESKIM, but will impact South Africa at large much more severely than, than the emissions themselves. So the problem has to be addressed, but in a very different way. And I'm suggesting shut down the older power plants and in this way, reduce uh, sulfur emissions uh, uh, significantly, actually, um, and improve the performance of the other plants. And then progressively deal with the issues as prescribed by the Department uh, of Environment, uh, but not in the way that they're currently prescribing it by these draconian rules. ESCOM can't bear it. The public can't bear it. And we cannot afford it. Simple. No, absolutely. And I mean, one of the implications that ESCOM has indicated as a result of this decision is the fact that it will cost it around 300 billion rand and it will need to increase um, um, the, the price of uh, electricity by about 10 percent. No doubt this is going to have a huge impact on small to medium businesses as well as households who are already struggling with very little power that they get from ESCOM anyway. The consequence is going to be very simple. <clears throat> they are going to severely impact industry firstly, uh, which basically um, relies on their exports and South Africa dearly needs. So that's going to be impacted immediately. The, the industry cannot, cannot sustain this, uh, this kind of uh, rulemaking. Um, firstly, secondly, the, the average consumer is going to pay. Uh, you say 10%, I suspect it's going to be more. Um, and the speed at which they want this to happen is, is just, just impractical. It's not possible. So we're going to have to cut 
uh, our, our, our cake, so to speak, to suit our pocket. And, and unfortunately, these measures are not that at all. Mm. What about the argument, very briefly, we've run out of time, Mike, the argument that this may motivate ESCOM to go green at a quicker pace and also motivate government to ensure that those IPPs are entering the operating scheme at a faster rate than we've seen? Let's separate two issues. <clears throat> um, it will not... Um, it will not help Eskom at all. It will not help the public at all. So, so that's that's ridiculous. Uh, I think it's total rubbish to say that it's going to turn Eskom green. Eskom can't turn green overnight. It's not possible. Firstly, the rules are not going to assist in that at all. They're just going to create more problems than what they're intended to do. Firstly, secondly, as far as the renewables are concerned, this has got nothing to do with this legislation actually, and actually very little to do with Eskom. It's got to do with higher political decisions which are being being delayed and, and, and poo-pooed. Um, and quite frankly, if you look at the IPP office, which was one of the most, the best vehicle to bring in IPPs, they were virtually shut down. At the moment, they're running seriously under-resourced and in a serious state. So as far as renewables are concerned, the government can, can, can make the decision to re-empower and, and uh, uh, re-equip the IPP office to get on with their work and to accelerate uh, IPPs itself. The Eskom board should step out the way in terms of their uh, dilly-dallying to approve IPPs. I know personally there are many people in Eskom who want to promote the IPPs, mm. but still are facing serious resistance from firstly the board <clears throat> and some in the executive. So, uh, as I said, the simple solution is shut down the old power plants. They can do it right away. Uh, improve the performance of the existing plants, uh, and they will do so very quickly because those resources of the old power plants can be directed to the older power plants, uh, shut down this, 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 this rulemaking uh, policy, and the politicians have to step up to the plate ASAP, re-empower the IPP office, and um, take some decisions here to assist ESCO. Mm. That was independent energy thought leader Mike Rousseau giving us insights on issues around ESCOM's emissions and a decision that was taken by the regulator this afternoon uh, that's not going to bode very well for ESCOM. With that